trained all of these pastures in 1996 and started grazing those in 97. And our plan was to graze these with early weaned calves. And that doesn't put a lot of pressure on them, but we turned cow herd in and mob graze these things starting in June of 97. And we continued to run our, our calf experiment from March to June and then mob grazed them through the early summer. And so all of these paddocks out here have been grazed that way. Uh, we're standing in a benchmark spot out here and there's very few plants remaining. Uh, by the time we were in the fourth year, we were at about 30% benchmark plants and persist at that time we were in the 70 80 percent stand on persist well, we'll take a minute and go over to the persist side we we compared these with uh, with and without clover with benchmark and persist uh, the one thing that was apparent was rather apparent as the benchmark came out of the clover pastures we almost wound up with a clover pasture competition between persist and clover appears to be quite good. Uh, we see that uh, that looks like just because of the bunch type nature of orchard grass that we're able to maintain some good clover stands in there. Some historical data out of Ames Plantation is probably the number one forage that uh, my predecessor used to put into their pasture experiments was orchard grass and clover. That was to give them, give them the, the positive control in their fescue studies. As we cross the fence up here, we'll, or the old fence line, we'll move into the persist pasture. It's a pretty good line of demarcation out here that uh, as we move into this pasture, we have a lot more orchard grass in it. You can see that the and of orchard grass out through here is quite good. And keep in mind this is 2004 and this is a 96 seeding of orchard grass. So it's kind of a rare occasion that you can walk through a grazed orchard grass pasture that's been out since 96. The real key element on this, it goes just across the fence and we'll look at it in a few minutes key element on this is that uh, when we have taken benchmark and use it just for hay, we've got a pretty good hay feel. When we brought the cattle in and have the cattle graze it, then we lose the benchmark. And this is really grazing it down one two inches. And that's pretty harsh grazing on orchard grass. But we kind of felt that it needs to compete with uh, tall fescue for grazing management and be able to offer beef producers forage that will uh, get them very good animal gains and make them somewhat of a forage. We're in benchmark over a few minutes ago. This is an area of persist. Um, we've evaluated this from a standpoint of forage quality and we would anticipate that this is similar in forage quality to the other orchard grass, which in fact is a very good forage for, for ruminants. Uh, this particular stand here we'd rate Rated in the 70 to 80 category in the stand that we were just in, there's only maybe 10% of the original benchmark left in that pasture. So quite a bit of difference in forage productivity. And again, we have grazed this down and have gone through some of the driest periods we've gone through at Ames Plantation during these, this particular experiment. So this is forage that comes back out of being grazed harshly in June in July and August, going through some droughts, and then uh, coming back to be regrazed now. Somebody. These paddocks we're going to go to are the grazing paddocks where we've got the cattle on there. This is our first full year of grazing all of those. And we'll see the grazing pressure we put on is quite intense. And that's our purpose is to make sure survivability is there and persistence is there. And we feel real good about the grazing. So we'll go over and take a look. As we go 
across these pastures, we'll visit different pastures. You can see the forage height in here. These are all at the same stocking rate. And one of the things we look at is forage height differences. You can see some patches of some pretty hot, tall fescue around in this, this particular pattern. Uh, data indicates it, not from here, but from other stations. It indicates that these cattle are probably consuming somewhere around 20-25% less forage because the endophyte is in the, in the particular forage, the fescue endophyte. Uh, these patchy areas we see in here are rather typical of the stocking rate. Uh, one of the things that this stocking rate does is maintains pretty good performance because the animals are grazing a lot of regrowth. If we reduce the stocking rate, we'd see more forage available. If we increase the stocking rate, rate we would really force this forage consumption. Cattle, when we first came into this paddock, we're all standing in the shade rather than grazing. That's also typical of the E plus cattle. Uh, having a longer hair coat, a bit more mud where they've been back in the shade where it's wet, muddy. During the, we're at about 90 degrees today, but when it gets really hot, uh, these cattle will venture out of the shade only to drink water and come back to the shade. Okay. Right now we're in a persist white clover paddock, and uh, you can see that we've had a really good clover year. We've got still have a number of plants out here, quite a bit of forage. The uh, pasture next to us is one with persist without clover. Uh, the cattle over here have an awful lot more forage to graze. Uh, we have to consider the fact they have more forage as well as the fact that we're fixing nitrogen with the clover, providing a little bit of nutrient supply for the persist in this pasture. The one neighboring pasture over there we're looking at now uh, is a persist without clover, and we're seeing some invasion of crabgrass into that pasture and it's because it really does have some space between rows whereas in this pasture the space between rows are pretty well occupied by the clover. So we would anticipate that we will get an effect of having the clover in the pasture as we see in our forest systems and we see that effect of clover whether it's an endophyte and endophyte free we still get a boost of clover so we'll anticipate getting a boost of clover and persist just on having a higher quality forage available and more forage available as, as in the case with these two pastures. Pastor here, this is what we're looking at here is a Kentucky 31 with clover. Uh, a couple of things, the cattle are in the shade, but just looking at it in general, we have a much lower clover count out there than we have on the persistent clover pasture to the side of the, on the other side. Look over at it, you see quite a difference in the stand of uh, white clover in the persist pasture. And I think that's one of the things that we see is orchard grass and clover seems to be a better combination than tall endophyte infected tall fescue and clover. And I don't think we totally understand why that's the case, but it obviously looks like we have a better opportunity in orchard grass to put clover with it than Kentucky 31 E. Plus. Again, this has been a very good clover year, so we would anticipate this is uh, typical of what we would see with a lower count of clover in the paddock we're standing in now is a persist paddock. This is probably the closest grazed paddock that we've seen today. Uh, the difference between this paddock and the others is perhaps related back to soil type. We have the same stocking rates, so these cattle have really grazed it down. And what we're going to do here is we have weigh day in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is the 8th of June. We'll take these cattle off of this. There'll be five of the larger steers going off, and we'll put uh, four of the newly weaned calves on, five weight calves. We'll come back on here and graze it during the summer. And then at the end of the summer, around Labor Day, we'll put about 60 units of nitrogen on this pasture, take the cattle out, and allow it to graze until around Thanksgiving. So we're essentially looking at stockpiling it. Now once again, we've taken the initial stands down this low before. And one of the things we see across our different reps is the difference in soil types. And uh, this is what we would anticipate if a farmer put out persist and treat it a lot like they do fescue. You'll see pastures where they graze them down this far this late in the summer. We anticipate reducing our stocking rate by going to the lighter weight calves will probably help this over the summer. 
Uh, and then the real telling thing will be how this looks in October when we have stockpiled it back in the fall. So this is uh, really putting orchard grass through the test of seeing how it takes the abuse of grazing it down low. So first, we can still see the rows in here, and we were just talking about the experience we've had in grazing persists down this low. And our manager out here has indicated that if we had not had the experience of doing this before, we would really be concerned about having it this low at this point. But uh, giving some more moisture, we'll see this grass respond more in the summer, but a lot more this fall. So we can still see rows of this in the new seeded side, but those have been grazed down within an inch of the ground and still have nice green cover in there. 